This is a bit of a spur of the moment video I got an idea for after reading this Fox News article. First, the article has several mistakes, which I won't go into, but the author must not be very familiar with this stuff. But it brings up a good point. Just how effective are these anti-ship ballistic missiles that China operates? Are aircraft carriers in the Western Pacific just sitting ducks that will be quickly sunk by DF-21D and DF-2060 missiles the moment a war broke out? And speaking of aircraft carriers, this video is sponsored by World of Warships, and you can play as one in the game, along with submarines, destroyers, cruisers, and more. There are over 300 different ships you can play as, all from the first half of the 20th century. Even the most iconic ships, like the USS Iowa, for example. It's a lot of fun action, but also requires strategy. So, for example, the Iowa might have bigger and more powerful weaponry, but it takes significantly longer to reload and is more difficult to maneuver and accelerate, so it's not always the best option. The game does a really good job at keeping it balanced, so no one ship can just destroy everyone else's right away. They're also extremely active with the game's community. Last fall, Eric and I went down to one of the events that they hold at museum ships. It was a lot of fun, and they really listened to feedback from the players. If you want to check it out and see for yourself, it's free to play, and you'll also get 700 doubloons, a million credits, 7 days of premium account time, and 2 premium ships by using my link in the description. So give World of Warships a try. There's nothing to lose, and you help further support this channel. Anti-ship ballistic missiles are a good idea. They are extremely fast compared to subsonic and even supersonic ones, like the American Harpoon or the Russian P-700. Their fast speed not only limits response time, but the physics make it extremely difficult to shoot down. The one major problem with them though is it's very difficult to control them. You can make some course corrections, maneuver around a bit, but not by much. Compared to something like the Lorazm, which can easily make a sharp 90 degree turn and change course if the target has moved substantially or if you want to go after another target. Ballistic missiles are not constantly being propelled like cruise missiles. Their engine only runs for the first few minutes while they get up to speed. And for the most part, the rest of the flight is just coasting and falling back to Earth. You can put some aerodynamic surfaces on it, so when it re-enters the atmosphere, it can have some maneuvering ability, sort of like the space shuttle. But unlike the space shuttle, when it lands, you are still traveling at several times the speed of sound. It's like trying to turn while driving 100 kilometers per hour. You just can't make the same sharp turns that you can make at 10 kilometers per hour. You can put small thrusters on board to help them maneuver, but again, those are gonna be limited and take up mass that could be used for your warhead. So the speed of anti-ship ballistic missiles is both a strength and weakness for it. So how do they actually work? Well, first you need to find your target, which is not an easy thing to do in the Pacific Ocean, the largest ocean in the world. There are a few ways you can do this. Maritime surveillance aircraft or even drones armed with powerful long-range radars or cameras, satellites, or through other means such as ELINT, sonar, visual identification, and more. Satellites might be the best equipped for this. Infrared and radar satellites can scan vast swaths of the ocean very quickly and also identify ships by their signatures. The problem is constantly tracking the ships so you can continue to update their position as they sail. Otherwise, if you wanted to attack, after the time it takes to alert the missile bases, ready their crews, ready the trucks and missiles, launch, then the 10 to 15 minute flight time of the missile, a ship sailing at 20 knots or faster trying to escape can get 20 to 50 kilometers away from where you last detected it. And it's really not known how much these missiles can maneuver, but that might be close to the range they can adjust, especially if they don't reacquire until it's detected by the missile's own onboard radar. And that's the real key to how these missiles work. They get targeting information from other assets, like satellites as mentioned, use that information and calculate where they think the ship will be by the time the missile arrives, and launch at that specific point. At this point, it's pretty much the same as any other ballistic missile. But here, you are trying to hit a moving target, so you are going to need some sort of terminal guidance. So, on the front of the missile, just like most typical anti-ship cruise missiles, it has a radar and it needs to be a pretty powerful long-range radar to give you the time you need to adjust since you're flying at hypersonic speeds. The radar will turn on and start searching for the target, and it needs to do this early enough so it has time to maneuver, but not too early when the target is out of the radar's range. And this gets complicated. As an object re-enters the atmosphere, it forms what is called a plasma sheath, which hurts radar performance, depending on its speed and altitude. 
The Apollo missions really made this more common knowledge when it had its radio blackout period for a few minutes before landing in the ocean. A ballistic missile, while traveling extremely fast, would be re-entering at much slower speeds than Apollo. So this effect would not be quite as extreme, but still present. The result of this plasma sheath makes an object's radar cross-section smaller, and therefore harder to detect. So this is a problem China would have had to take into account. Either they have a much more powerful radar that can acquire their targets before re-entry and make adjustments, which would be easier, but require a more powerful and therefore almost certainly larger, heavier radar. Or wait until after this period, be able to have a smaller, lighter radar that doesn't require you to shrink the size of your warhead or increase the size of the missile. But then again, you have very little time to maneuver to hit the target before you smash into the water. Unfortunately, many of the details and specifications are just not public knowledge. It's possible the US government knows, through info gathered by intelligence agencies. We know the US was aware and carefully watching development of the DF-21D since at least 2006. And this knowledge would be important as it could help develop a way to counter this threat, such as how and when to attempt to jam its radar. Pretty much all US warships are armed with something called a Slick 32. Destroyers, cruisers, aircraft carriers, even amphibious landing and dock ships. Version 3 and newer added the radar jamming ability. This will pump a whole bunch of radar waves back at the incoming missile, so that it has a harder time finding the real target. Basically, overloading the missile's radar with information. As with all radar jamming though, there is something called burn through. That is, when the missile gets close enough so its own radar overpowers the jamming, and it can see it clearly again. However, again, since the missile is traveling so fast, that might be too late. So radar jamming could potentially be more useful against anti-ship ballistic missiles than it normally is against slower cruise missiles. Another similar defense against these is chaff. These fire up into the air and release a cloud of metallic strips which will show up on radar. Like jamming, this is to confuse the radar and not be able to distinguish the real target from the false ones. Pretty much all US ships are armed with chaff dispensers. Another option, and probably the most well-known, is to shoot them down with interceptor missiles. Unlike what that Fox News article says, you can't shoot down ballistic missiles with the F-35 or ESSM. They just don't have the range, speed, or sensors necessary. The missile that was designed from the ground up to do this is the SM-3. It carries no warhead, but destroys its target by simply smashing into it at high speeds. And this is actually another thing I've seen wrong in infographics and the news. The DF-21D is not going to be able to maneuver and dodge the SM-3. The SM-3's lightweight exoatmospheric projectile, which smashes into the target, as the name implies, hits the target outside or at the very edge of the atmosphere, where any control surfaces on the DF-21D wouldn't work due to the lack of atmosphere. It could use small thrusters to move around a bit, but nowhere near what these infographics claim. The US has been equipping more and more ships with the SM-3 interceptor, and the required radar upgrades needed to operate them. It's believed to be very capable, and has performed pretty well in controlled tests, but in an actual real-world event, it likely won't be as effective. It's also deployed in relatively small numbers, so any saturation attack could easily overwhelm this method of defense. However, China doesn't yet have a massive number of these DF-21Ds its arsenal estimated to be about 100 of them, and even less of the much larger DF-2060s. Their massive size and complexity makes them much more expensive than the smaller anti-ship cruise missiles, so it would need to use them strategically, not simply fire a barrage at every warship that approaches. They'd almost certainly be saved for the large aircraft carriers, of which the US has few of in the Pacific. There's also some questions about how successful these missiles are. China is very secretive about tests, so little is known. You may have come across this picture if you've read about the DF-21D. It's said to be of a DF-21D test, and the concrete pad designed to simulate the size of a US carrier. I don't believe this is true though. This target is only 6 kilometers away from a massive test facility and air base where they practice aerial combat. It doesn't really make sense that you'd fire a 2,000 kilometer range missile at a target so close to such a facility because if anything went wrong, and the missile goes just a fraction of a degree off course, it could very easily hit that base. The picture seems more likely to be an aerial target for bombing practice by aircraft practicing hitting a runway. The crater also appeared sometime in early 2006, 
which is when China had first really began developing the maneuvering re-entry vehicle. So again, unlikely to be a test of the actual missile, or anything close to the final DF-21D. Anyway, there's just too many variables we don't know yet. On paper, it sounds like an incredible system. Also on paper, the US defenses like the SM-3 and Slick-32 sound pretty capable, but there are many unknowns. However, if you're the captain of a US aircraft carrier, or commander of the US Pacific Fleet, you have to assume they work, and plan accordingly. If actual hostilities broke out, US carriers would likely stay back further away for this reason. So, even if they don't work at all, it still has a powerful effect on the US Navy.